his bow camp up at Crystal Falls and was joined there by old friends Dave Schroeder and Ron LeClaire. Well, our bow camp started out in Iron County, just a hop, skip, and a jump from the Michigan-Wisconsin border. Now, plenty of deer here, and we were looking forward to a good hunt with good friends. Now, staying in a rustic cabin with no water or power, I was soon joined by two of my favorite people, traditional bow hunter and retailer of traditional archery equipment, Ron LeClaire of Potterville, an old friend and an owner of Dave's Archery Repair, Dave Schroeder from Grand Ledge. By the way, the fur cap you see me wearing right there, <laughs> it's one Ron left at the same camp last year. Dave Schroeder is one of the foremost experts in shooters of high-tech archery equipment. He knows the business well. And Ron is an old-fashioned stick-and-string guy who was really sold that that's the way to hunt. For me. For me. Not for everybody. Uh, to each his own. I mean, you know, I like it. Uh, some people don't. So it just it's up to the individual. Whatever you like, go with it. Did you ever get feeling comfortable with just totally instinctively shooting? I never could assume the position, Bob. When you got to stand there and, and hunker down and pull it back and shoot it, I, I just never was comfortable. I like to stand up straight, pull it back, and shoot it. He just doesn't like to hunker down and assume the position. He likes to stand up straight and shoot. But <clears throat> that doesn't happen that often in a hunting situation. You are hunkered down and... and uh, too many times people practice in the, in the stand-up target archer stance position. And then when they get out in the woods, they're hunkered down in a blind or in a tree stand, and they haven't really practiced that much from that position. So it's entirely different. And another thing, uh, people judge equipment by uh, how it performs on the target range or in the, in the backyard on the butts, you know, how well they can shoot groups, what, what, uh, how tight their groups are. Actually, in a hunting situation, it's the first arrow. Our group is our first arrow. That's the one we got to make count. So that's how you judge a bow or equipment. You've got to get the bow to match you number one. You've got to make sure the draw length is right and the poundage is something you can handle. After that, of course, you've got to get your arrow rest right, your cable guard right, and the sight right, the things we talked about earlier. So it's not very simple. It is somewhat complicated for somebody just to walk into a store and, uh, and buy this stuff off the shelf and then try to put it together. Well, that's right. For a person to go out and buy a bow and a arrow and figure he's going to go hunting is not the way to do it. It all has to work. It all has to fit. Dave chose to put his tree stand in a group of trees right along a mile-long ridge that offered sporadic clumps of cover and lots of well-used runways from deer moving to and from feeding areas. Now, there were some blind spots along the trails, but generally, Dave could see deer from a long way off. Now, taking care not to carry his bow up to the stand, Dave hauls it up on Really, it's about the only safe way to do it. Now, after his safety belt is secured in order to get ready for the evening hunt. There are some deer way off in the distance, way too far to shoot at. But just to see how far they are, Dave Schroeder uses his range finder. <laughs> well, they're way out. They're a couple hundred yards out, and they're baldies. The first night, Dave is looking for a buck and a lot shorter shot to boot. <laughs> so, <laughs> of course, he lets them go. But they're fun to watch anyway. They meander away with an occasional flip of the tail, but otherwise, they're not alarmed at all. Ron LeClaire has put his stand in an area with a little denser cover along a well-used runway. Now the stand is already in the tree and Ron gets ready for an easy climb. He kind of corkscrews his way up the branches. It's a traditional way up a tree for a traditional guy. What's caused the resurgence, you think, in traditional archery? Or really not even a resurgence, just people are, many people discovering it for the first time. I don't know. I, I really haven't quite figured it out. I don't know if it's just started to grow and it's snowballing or if it's just that <clears throat> high-tech archery has gone so far that it's actually made some people shun away from it. I, I haven't figured it out yet. I just know that it is growing in leaps and bounds. Why did you pick the stand you're in right now? stand I'm in now? Well, it, it's a stand that I had actually last year and uh, the deer are kind of funneling up out of the swamp and, and into the hardwoods in that area. I like to hunt mainly trails and scrapes and runs and uh, without bait. And I, I kind of enjoy uh, figuring out the deer, where they're at, where they're going to move to, 
so you feel that's part of the challenge of the hunt. Back at Dave Schroeder's stand, Dave's got his eye on a deer that keeps moving closer. Now this deer is a little spooky, no telling why. Pretty soon, it blows at Dave. Then the deer runs out into a little clearing. Still not all that spooked. It knows something, though, is not right. Now, it could be that the downdrafts from the side hill shifted Dave's scent towards the deer. It's the best theory we've got going this evening, but nobody really knows for exact sure. Now, there's another deer that snuck in behind Dave and James Ford, who's running the camera. Dave has to twist around for a shot. A clean miss. Why'd he miss? Well, Dave doesn't know for sure. It could have been a twig or a branch between me and the deer that I didn't see. It could have been just a, a faulty release. I could have dropped my bow arm. There's many, many things involved in what made the arrow go where it went. But I'm just totally pleased that it was a clean miss. I'd much rather have a clean miss or a clean kill, one or the other. But I'm happy I missed, put yeah. it that way. Ron, you've been seeing deer. Yeah, we've seen a few deer. Uh, so far, they haven't cooperated and, and came into where we could get a good crack at them. I could have took a shot last night at 30 yards, and, and I'm sure I could have put an arrow into the deer, but I wasn't 100% sure that I could put it where I wanted it, so we let them go. Okay, here's the situation. It's later on the same evening, and Dave Schroeder is about ready to get a second chance. Now, if you keep your eyes on the upper right-hand side of your television screen between the two branches, you can see the buck that Dave's watching. It's about a year and a half old spike. Another clean miss. Dave got out of the tree and picked up the arrow. And just as Dave Schroeder suspected, it was clean as a whistle. Now, before the next day's hunt, Ron sharpened his broadheads and built a ground blind closer to the runway. He was using his new shorter longbow called a shrew, and the sharp broadheads paid off as he made a very quick and clean kill on a lone doe at about six yards. Now, both traditional archers and high-tech compound shooters have one thing in common. They must practice, practice, and practice some more. And not even that guarantees success.